Welcome to this tutorial on a hypothesis testing using Excel's data analysis tool. In this video, we will use Excel's data analysis tool to do hypothesis testing for the case of sigma unknown. Remember, for sigma unknown, we use S as a point estimator for sigma. And we use the T table instead of the Z table. The test statistic for mu sigma unknown is as follows. T is equal to x bar minus mu naught, mu naught is the hypothesized mean, divided by s over the square root of n. So let's do an example of a two-tailed test for the population mean mu, sigma unknown. In this example, we're going to see if the mean grade on an exam is 75. Our null hypothesis is the status quo, that the mean is equal to 75, and the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not equal to 75. Remember, the alternative hypothesis is always counter to the null. Because this is equal to or not equal to, this is considered a two-tailed test, and therefore we have two areas of rejection and one area of non-rejection. So the first step in hypothesis testing is to take a sample. Then we calculate the test statistic. We look up a critical value, and we come to some sort of conclusion. You should be familiar with this technique from a previous lesson or a previous video. The critical value is sort of a cutoff point which separates the rejection and non-rejection regions. So once we calculate the test statistic and look up critical value, we come to a statistical conclusion. Either reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's take a sample. And let's say we have 50 students and the sample grade average on an exam is 78.96 with a standard deviation of 10.7075. So now the next step is to calculate the test statistic and if we were doing this by hand, 78.96 minus 75 divided by s over the square root of n and we get 2.6151. Okay, now we look up the critical value, and to do that we need alpha, so let's say that alpha is 0.05. Because this is a two-tailed test, we split alpha in half, so alpha is 0.025, and we need degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, 49 degrees of freedom. So, looking up the critical value in the t-table, this is the abridged version of the t-table, so we have 50 degrees of freedom. I don't have 49 degrees on this table. And alpha divided in half is 0.025. And we get a critical value of 2.009. Okay, so we've looked up the critical value and we found the critical value is 2.009. Now we have to check on the distribution whether the test statistic falls in the rejection region or the non-rejection region. The critical value again is 2.009. The test statistic was 2.6151. And where does that fall? That falls in the tail area, and that is the rejection region. So we say reject the null. If we reject the null, that means we found evidence for the alternative hypothesis. And so there is evidence that the mean is different from 75. Okay, we go to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so we're going to use the data analysis tool to compute um, the test statistic, but before we do that, we need to set up a dummy column here. So let's type in dummy, D-U-M-M-Y, and let's put in some data for the dummy data. Okay, and the reason we have to do that is because, you'll see in a moment, when we select the data analysis tool, the t-test is only for two sample test, so we fool or we trick Excel into thinking we have two samples. In order to do this using Excel, we go to the Data tab, we click on Data Analysis, and then we scroll down to where it says T-Test, and we're going to use T-Test to sample, we're going to use T-Test to sample assuming unequal variances. So click OK. And for the variable one range, we're going to use our real data, which is grade on exam. So click in the first cell and then press Control, Shift, and Down key to select the entire column. And there you see we have the entire columns, C1 through C51. Now let us put in for the variable two range. We don't have variable two. So we're going to use our dummy column 
control shift down and that is L1 through L3. Okay, now click on the box that says labels because we have labels in the first row. And then for the hypothesize mean, we go back to our problem. What did we hypothesize our uh, mean to be? Here we hypothesized our mean to be 75. So let's type in 75 for our mean, 75. So that is our hypothesized mean. And now we can say, okay, we have this in a new worksheet because there's really no room to have it here. So click OK, and there is the output. Now, now let's take a look and see if it gave us the same numbers that we got when we did this by hand. So let's go back and see what we calculated as our test statistic. The test statistic was 2.6151. Okay, let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet and we can see test statistic is 2.6151, which is exactly what we calculated by hand. And if you look up the critical value, you saw we looked it up in the t-table and we found 2.009, so that's the same number. So what you need to do, it doesn't tell you when you run the test, it only gives you the test statistic and the critical value. And so you can see the test statistic is in the rejection region, or you can use the p-value. Okay, using the p-value approach, uh, for a two-tailed test, what we do is we double the p-value and compare it with all of alpha. And the rejection rule is to reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So let's look up the test statistic. The test statistic was 2.6151. And we look under 49 degrees of freedom, but we don't have 49 degrees of freedom on this table, so let's use 50 degrees of freedom. And now looking for 2.6151, we find that it is in between these two numbers. All right, and then we look up and we see the p-value there. Now, I don't know exactly what the p-value is, but we can double that p-value, and we would know that that p-value is certainly less than alpha, because alpha is over here, 0.05, so anything to the right of that is less than alpha. We would reject the null, and we would find that there is evidence that the mean is different from 75. If we go back to the Excel spreadsheet, we can see that the exact p-value is 0.0118, and that is, of course, less than alpha. Alpha was 0.05, so 0.01 is less than 0.05, and therefore the same conclusion. We reject the null and find that the mean is different from 75. There is evidence that the mean is different from 75. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.